another corpse thrown in the streets. Someone's playing a very sick game. I know this brooch. This is my mother's. A birthday gift from father. Twenty-nine Pretty Orchard Street. That's near Poplar's district. Why would this man carry off my mother's brooch? I must go there. Should have offered a drink to the boy. Be he cursed or not, he's just another. Welcome hostage. back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She just has to learn to control it. You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. 
Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a time. I can't believe I'm doing this. I cannot enter.
Hey, Doc. You're lucky to be alive, Mr. Cox. I hope you're starting to take better care of yourself. This place is full of sickness and decay. How could I get better in such a dump? Consider yourself lucky that I'm treating all of my patients equally. But don't push your luck. Don't play the innocent with me. I'm sure you have good reasons to act this way. And also weaknesses that can be exploited. Killed, extorted, stole. Now I die. Fuck it. I live the way I wanted. It is good to see you again, Jonathan. How are you? I'm better than one might expect, Lady Ashbury. Dr. Swansea has asked me to investigate the recent disturbances in the hospital caused by skulls. Really? What do you mean? I discovered the most intriguing skull, an elderly woman answering to the name of old Bridget and a man who helps them remain hidden in London. Old Bridget? Peculiar name, I've never heard of her. According to Old Bridget, skulls can lead a peaceful existence like us. They are even able to nourish themselves by feeding on corpses and the flesh of the dead. How vile. Please, Jonathan, let's change the subject. Skulls of London have gone into hiding. Both mortals and immortals plot their extermination. Yes. Skulls are the orphans of the vampire society. They are the shame of their genitors. A disgrace to the vampire that created them. There is something ominous closing around me, Lady Ashbury. Something spies upon me from the shadows. Something cruel and wicked. Whatever do you mean, Jonathan? If Sean Hampton and Harriet were not the guilty parties, then who? I saw the bodies and the blood. Your rebirth has not gone unnoticed, Jonathan. Be extremely careful. If you get in the way of an immortal's plans. Do you suspect someone? I don't know, Jonathan. 
I steer clear of vampire politics, especially whilst hunters roam the city's streets. Goodbye for now, my lady. It's locked, all right. It's locked. It's locked, all right. It's locked. Jonathan, at last. I've been worried sick. Have you solved the case of our poor Sean Hampton? Don't worry, Edgar. The reputation of Pembroke Hospital is secure. Sean Hampton was not the guilty party. Is that true? Oh, good news. Good news indeed. What do you know of the Ascalon Club? Uh, not as much as I would like. There have always been rumors about a secret society of vampires operating in the interests of the British Empire. Though I've never met a member. I crossed paths with one. A terrifying creature going by the name of Fergal. He was sent by the Ascalon Club to exterminate the Skulls of the East End. By the stole, Jonathan. If vampires are eliminating their own progeny, then... Dark times are upon us. Darker than I've ever witnessed. Do you think Lady Ashbury would know of them? Jonathan, our beloved lady is not one for social dalliances, nor the assemblies of dark orders. She's a woman of superior taste and selective acquaintance. Does the name Old Bridget ring any bells? I'd never heard of her. Why? A patient of ours? I must confess, I don't know them all. No, it's just someone I recently met. A fascinating woman. I had thought that perhaps... By the stole, Jonathan, you've met another vampire. I would appreciate an introduction, if that's the case. I found Harriet Jones. She's much the same old, embittered woman she was, only she's been made a scowl. Her transformation did not go well. Incredible. Why not bring her here? We could learn so much by studying her condition. It would be fascinating. I doubt that. She can barely move. Perhaps we could learn more about the degeneration of scowls. Perhaps. But she could also belong to a new species. We know so little of the laws that dictate vampire reproduction. Were there any studies made by your order on the subject? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I will transmit your discovery to the Brotherhood's primate. He will be delighted. A pleasure as always, Edgar.
Good evening, sir. It's me again. Leave me alone, I say, whoever you are. It cannot be safe for a blind man to live here alone. Let me enter, sir. I swear I mean you no harm. Well, a voice never lies, and yours clearly is the voice of a gentleman. All right, doctor, come on in. Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either brave or a fool. It's locked, all right. So what is the name of my nocturnal visitor? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. As I already explained to you, I'm inquiring about the epidemic. Dr. Reed? The eminent surgeon? My god! I'd never have expected a brilliant physician like you to knock on my door. You flatter me, sir. No, sir, I am flattered. I read all your work when I still had my sight. I loved it. I'm Mason Swanborough, by the way. And what else have you learned about me, Mr. Swanborough? I know you assisted Professor Carell in France, and that you invented a new blood transfusion method based on his work. Yes. Those were frustrating but exciting days. I loved it. Yes, the thrill of research and discovery. This is what drives people like us, Dr. Reed. Oh, how I envy you. Does someone take care of you in this isolated place? My sister Loretta and I have our daily routine. Every morning and evening she comes by so we can talk and eat. Then she leaves and I stay. Do you not appreciate your sister's visit? Loretta is the best and worst thing that happened to me. And I believe she could say the same thing about me. Where does your sister go? Well, let's just say, she earns enough money for us both. What's so amusing about that? I won't hide the truth from you. Loretta sells a fake miracle elixir to the sick people of Whitechapel. Have you heard anything about Nurse Crane and her dispensary? I don't know who she is. Do you know Braille, Mr. Swanborough? I'm no expert, but I learned it in my spare time, yes. Why? I found a strange document entitled Cure for Blindness. It's written in Braille, so I thought perhaps it was yours. Really? Is that some kind of sick joke? Let me see. Here it is. This letter seems authentic. And it actually refers to an experimental cure for blindness. You have piqued my interest, Dr. Reed. Could it be of any use to you? No. This page is just a part of a larger diary. I'd be glad if you could find the other pages. I found another page of the diary, Mr. Swanborough. This diary is still not complete. 
The man who wrote it claims he is a member of some scholarly brotherhood called the St. Paul's Stole. Really? I've heard of them. Very capable scientists. Perhaps the man who wrote this really found a cure. I would need more pages to figure it out, but it's as promising as it is intriguing. Goodbye, Mr. Swanborough. I'll leave you now. What kind of gentleman pays visits to people at this late hour? Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either brave or a fool. It's locked. Twenty nine Pretty Orchard Street. This is it. What's in there for me? There's been a fight here. This window was shattered with violent force. Someone's been pulled through it and dragged through the street. Who could have done that? So much blood. Whoever was killed got dried out. I'm out here to 
step back! It's just for him! The marks on this woman's neck were made by the fangs of a vampire. This is the very flower my mother tossed on Mary's coffin. Someone is targeting my family. Only a golden watch in her pockets. Her shoes and clothes are quite worn out. Right then, it's a sick game, but given no choice in the matter, I might as well win it. I won't let you escape. You're very fast, but I'll catch you. They've all been butchered. still sense a presence. 
please. You, what have you done? The Calarabi. What happened? Demon! Hell Scourge! Son of Perdition! Vicar, Vicar! <laughs> Jonathan is no demon. He's just a loving son returned from the dead. Like your Christ, Vicar. Mary, it has been you all along. Oh, it's me, all right, precious brother. Why did you lure me here? I'm gathering the family. For a final reunion. All smiling, all dead. Thanks to the good Dr. Reed. Mary. Mother, say hello to your son. Hello, Jonathan. Mother, I... What do we have here, Mother? The prodigal son has lost his tongue. Our Jonathan always had the first and last word at dinner. The entertainer, the star of our show. Mary, let me explain. Shut up. It's my turn to do the talking. I have this nasty hole in my chest, Johnny. It needs to breathe. Right then. Speak. My prayers went so long without an answer. My husband killed in France. My child carried away by the flu. My brother promising to return in his letters, then disappearing in thin air. I went from hospital to hospital, cemetery to cemetery, grave to grave. I've lifted every stone in London, searching for an end to the nightmare. And there you were, in front of me, on a dark pier. It was the hunger. You know it now as well. The joy to have finally found you. I longed for your arms, a final happy ending to so much tragedy, to tell me all would be well again. As you did when we were children. It was this filthy dock where you greeted your sister. I dug a tunnel from my grave with my fingers and teeth. Mary. I had taken your life before I realized it was you. I tried to kill myself. Hmm. But you failed in your attempt. We cannot die, can we? We are a plague. I've watched you, Jonathan. You pull the strings and sever them. I've done what I had to do. I did not choose this fate, but I will have my answers. <laughs> There are no answers, Doctor. There's nothing left but pain and lies and treachery. Mary, wait! Time to go, Mother. Give my regards to my son. No! 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 This is what I do to those I cherish. Can you imagine what I have in mind for you? I'll destroy you! Finally, we hear the truth! Dr. Reed, admit it. You're a monster who takes joy in killing, who relishes the chase, the secrecy of it all. I'm still a scientist. I shall find a cure for this madness. You lie to yourself. Confess your sins. Over the slaughtered corpse of our mother! Are those tears, brother dear? Your heart still bleeds with emotion. My dead heart has dried. <laughs> you are mad. Oh, so that's what I am, Doctor. Mad? I was beginning to wonder. I've been hearing voices, one in particular. That of my dead brother. This is the reason I must kill you. Not for your betrayal. Not for our poisonous kiss. Not even for the lies you tell yourself. No. It's so that smooth and wicked voice will stop ringing in my head. I cannot let you kill again, Mary. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Time to die, brother. And this time for good. Domination. <laughs> Adjusted. You left me to rot in this grave. Come to me, Jonathan. 